Today we're taking a look at What's in the Bible Church Edition. This is volume one titled Genesis in the Beginning. This is created by Phil Vischer, who also created most famously VeggieTales. Uh, VeggieTales, the big point of VeggieTales was to communicate to children that God made you and loves you very much. And here we see Phil taking a much deeper look at content creation in what's in the Bible. And you can even tell that just by looking at the first four episodes in this volume. Each volume that they create has four episodes and then or lessons, and each lesson has a series of videos, uh, small group material, games, music, customizable documents, and they even advertise an online companion for families at home. I've been able to use all of those in the past, and so hopefully we can kind of share some thoughts on that. But the first four lessons in this episode, this volume, is called What's in the Bible, Who Wrote the Bible, Genesis and Primeval History, and Patriarchal History. They're really going in-depth here, opposed to just doing a surface-level skimming of, of the Old Testament or even the book of Genesis. This is just laying the foundation for the rest of the Bible. And the first two lessons, lessons in particular, what's in the Bible discusses the creation of the Bible, uh, who wrote it, how it was written, how it was recorded, edited, put together, all that. It's very fascinating. And I had, when I taught this in my church, I had a lot of parents coming to me saying, wow, I had no idea that that, that would even existed. I think this is the first time in a Sunday school setting that I've covered the Apocrypha in depth. So it's pretty deep. The small group components are aligned with the video presentation. So each video DVD has several clips. The first clip is kind of an introductory clip. Then you have your main lesson and a wrap-up clip. And the fourth clip that you'll share is kind of a response quiz time. It's a, it's a review clip that you'd use with, with your kids. The kit comes with a classroom DVD that you can play all these videos straight off a DVD, or they also come with a video and music clip that actually give you the MPEG file so that you can import them into your either uh, Pro Presenter or PowerPoint or Keynote presentation. However you're sharing video, if it's off a computer, it's extremely handy. I found in the past I've had to go out of my way to rip the clips off of the DVD so that I can import them and have a little more control over how it looks and feels. But here with What's in the Bible, they just give you that right off the bat. A third disc has print materials on it. This is where you're going to get all the source material for your lessons. Now, they give you two versions. One is a highly polished PDF that you just can print off. The second is a Word document that you can edit. It doesn't look as good, but it is easily changeable to suit the needs of your church. The fourth disc is a training DVD. I didn't find this very helpful. I watched it myself. I chose not to show it to my volunteers, but it's there. It's something that you can consider whether or not you'd want to use. My overall impression of what's in the Bible is that it's great. Uh, it's not super cheap. Uh, it, it's listed at 80 bucks. You can often get it cheaper than that. And for four lessons, uh, that's not a, a killer deal, but it's also not the most you can pay. I really had to kind of make the best of the content. It's not everything you'll need. Now, I know curriculum, it never is, and you don't want it like that because you want to kind of add your own content. So for me, it was perfect. It gave me a platform upon which I could build a worship service and offering a, a time about missions and giving, and it really worked well in our setting. I will say that it, it targets probably closer to third grade is probably its sweet spot. On the early boxes, on the back, it would advertise that it's for grades one through four. And I would say that's pretty accurate. My fifth and sixth graders that we had in our church, they were a little bit checked out. Um, they weren't getting all the adult humor, and there's plenty of it that's pretty hilarious that your volunteers will find funny. Um, but they also weren't interested in the puppets. The team from What's in the Bible has completed volumes 1 through 9, which completes the Old Testament. So know that if you're considering taking this on as a curriculum for you and your church, that you are only going to get through Malachi before you're going to have to go to Plan B. They're currently in production. They've been fairly consistent about getting these uh, different clips out on time. So I would anticipate that if you started now, uh, that they would probably keep up with you as far as completing the New Testament. But they seem to be not in a hurry to get through it, but they are doing it well. The video quality is consistent, the humor as well. Some, uh, some volumes feel a little on the repetitive side. I think they often overutilize the uh, re recapture of the previous lesson in the, the current week's content. Um, I know repeating is not a bad thing with kids. You can repeat and repeat and repeat, but sometimes I felt like my kids were rolling their eyes and saying, hey, we just didn't, is this last week's lesson or is this this week's lesson? So that was a, uh, another kind of mark against what's in the Bible in my opinion. 
But overall, I loved using it. I loved its approach of going from Genesis through Revelation. I love how thorough it's been. The discussion sheets were just fine. It gave us plenty of content to jump off of each week. Some of my newer children's ministry leaders felt like they didn't have all the content that they would like, but most of my leaders felt like it was good high points that brought about the real discussion um, content out of the, out of the uh, videos. So I would recommend it, and if you're curious, I would definitely recommend taking a look. Uh, if you want to just pick up one box and try out a few, uh, a few lessons from the get-go, know that the lessons you'll try in Volume 1 are they keep the same formula all the way up through the, the current volume. So what you see in that first box is what you're going to continue to get. So if you like that, go for it. If not, you may want to look somewhere else. Thanks for checking out our review of What's in the Bible, Church Edition, Volume 1. If you have any questions, you can write us at cmjumpstart at gmail.com. And be sure to check out our website at cmjumpstart.com.